good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Chopping It Up with Rob Mel. No notes, straight from the throat. Well, it's Monday morning. Hopefully everybody's had a wonderful holiday. Family came and went and everybody had a safe return. And uh, we can all look forward to the next holiday, which is Christmas. But uh, the weekend in sports it was, and it was a very exciting weekend and a big weekend. And it was only fitting that the NFL kicked off, uh, uh, how can I say it, completed Sunday night with a bang. And we'll start there. Uh, what a game it was by Kansas City and Denver. Uh, the, the loser here probably puts themselves in a, in, a, in a bad position where Miami could, could threaten their playoff hopes. Uh, Miami now winners of six in a row. Uh, so... Uh, they they continue they win in ways and it's puts pressure on a loser of this Kansas City Denver game which was Denver now Denver is trailing Miami for the second wild card so that's something to keep an eye on it but this Kansas City Denver game went into overtime and it was won by a field goal by Kansas City and uh, just just a phenomenal game uh, you know Simeon he had a great game for Denver three hundred forty six yards I believe it was or more. But uh, there was a lot going on there. Uh, just a phenomenal finish to a Sunday, uh, Sunday day of football game. And I, I'm going to tell you, man, you never know which Kansas City you're going to get. But Kansas City always seems like they're one of these better uh, regular season teams, man. And, and one thing about an uh, Andy Reid team, you know you're going to get a team that's going to be well coached and well prepared. And uh, let's see what happens. Alex Smith is like one of the the ultimate game managers, but every now and then he's going to have to do something spectacular. I think he holds them back uh, because he doesn't go out there and win a game. But but needless to say, big win by Kansas City. Next, I want to go to the team in my backyard, and that is uh, the Atlanta Falcons. You know my motto? Stars need to play like stars when stars need to be stars. Well, in this particular game, uh, it wasn't a typical Julio Jones game. You know, uh, Matt Ryan, he did throw for 250 yards. And uh, the Atlanta Falcons continue to to score a lot of points, 38 points, uh, you know, 38 points here. But this belongs to somebody, I don't even know who he is really, Taylor Gabriel, from what I understand. He was on the Cleveland Browns roster at the beginning of the season. They cut him, released him. And here he is making a difference uh, uh, this weekend. Coming off the bye week, man, the guy had two touchdowns, took uh, took two passes and took it for touchdown. Listen, when you're a good team, you're going to find ways to win. When you're a good team, some players are just going to step up. And if that's the case, like I said, Julio Jones had a relatively quiet game. He stepped up in a big way. Devontae Freeman, he had 16 carries for 60 yards. Listen, that's less than four yards a carry. So uh, kudos to the Falcons for just finding a way to win. You know, sometimes the better team always finds a way to win. So on that note, uh, good win for Atlanta uh, because they have to keep striding and keep their winning ways because uh, Tampa Bay, to my surprise, here all along I was saying don't count the Carolina Panthers out, but Tampa Bay with another exciting win and now they're only a game behind Atlanta in the division. So as Atlanta is seven and four, they're six and five. This might go down to the wire. And and remember, this uh, Tampa Bay team has been Atlanta's nemesis these last past season. Atlanta got them this year uh, down in Tampa Bay, but it, this is going to be fun to watch. So keep an eye on this as the season progresses. But again, Atlanta prevails. Uh, Gabriel Taylor as one. One uh, viewer right now, as we are live on Facebook, my man Joe Magduzian, he, he said, Gabriel. Yeah, who is Gabriel? He came up big. So, I mean, again, this is when when better teams find a, find ways to win. Good teams find ways to win. If it's an unsung hero, it's an unsung hero. If it's the normal stars, it's the normal stars. But in a situation like this, and again, Tampa Bay pulling off the upset, shutting Seattle out, no offensive touchdown. Uh, Seattle did score five points of field goal and safety, but for the most part, they shut them down and they went and, and 
They got a win. It was at home, but it, nevertheless, it was against Seattle. And Tampa Bay is right on the net of uh, of an Atlanta Falcons. So the Falcons have no room for uh, no margin for error. You know, so good game by uh, Matt Ryan. Uh, he's dropped off, in my mind, out of the MVP race a little bit. But he's still an MVP candidate. You know, I talked about Arizona, as many people had them as the favorite going into uh, 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 to the season, possibly representing the NFC in the Super Bowl. Again, I can't say it enough. They are one of my most disappointing teams out there, along with Cincinnati, along with my New York Jets, and along with the team I want to talk about next, the Carolina Panthers. It's only, it's only fitting that the season for the Carolina Panthers pretty much, and, and Cam Newton pretty much ended yesterday because now I don't think they can take themselves out of this hole. Best case scenario, they're 9-7, and seven, and I don't think that helps them in the division nor in the wild card. But it's only fitting that their season ended on a play where Cam gets sacked and gets knocked around because it started that way in Denver on Thursday night, first week of the season. You know, listen, I, 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 like, to see, I, I like to see Cam do well. I think Cam is one of the better quarterbacks in the game. But uh, this one, I'm going to blame on Cam. You know, you got one timeout left in the final seconds, final minutes. It's no way you burn a timeout because you can't get a playoff within 30 seconds or, 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 or the lot time allowed. I mean, this is on Cam. He's got to be aware of the situation. He's got to be aware of the clock. This is clock management. I mean, you're one of the better quarterbacks in the game. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. You could go down there, either score a touchdown or tie this up. But you have to manage the clock better. You have to know what's going on. Get your team together. Rally them together. To burn a timeout in that situation took away the possibility of a run play. You was in two down. You was in four down territory. It's third and ten. It's no way you burn a timeout there. This one is on Cam. After they uh, came back with a magnificent uh, comeback to to take the lead to put this game in a situation where it was, you. This is all on Cam. You know, it was a tale of two halves. He was horrible in the first half, outstanding in the second half until when it mattered most, and that was at the end of the game there. Again, once again, burning that time out, not getting a playoff in time, really hurts. But on the other side of the ball, can't say enough about Carl. He, he's an MVP candidate, and there's a reason why his team is 9-2, and two, because of plays like him. Uh, what, what he done. Here's a guy that went out, had a little thumb in, uh, injury on one of his fingers, looked like it was dislocated. Uh, perhaps maybe there was a, a chance that he doesn't return. You know, I've seen people come back with worse injury, but anytime you can come back with an injury that that is on your throwing hand as a quarterback, man, to be effective the way he was down the stretch and propel his team to be in a position to win the game, you can't say nothing about about this guy. His his, his heart, his soul, and his guts. I mean, the guy he's a gritty performer, and he's a leader of this team, and 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 he showed it yesterday. And you know, and you guys again, I'll, I'll say it again, man. Stars need to play like stars when stars need to be stars. And and him being an MVP candidate, he showed it yesterday with his grit. It was just a good performance. And Michael Crabtree, you know, once upon a time, he was a darling over in San Francisco with the 49ers. And it uh, seemed like he was a lost guy, an odd man out, whatever the case might be. But, yeah, he came up huge in the fourth quarter on some drives with some nice catches. I mean, just huge. Can't say enough about uh, Michael Cap Crabtree's performance late in the fourth quarter, along with Derek Carr. It's just outstanding. And then that defense collapsing on uh, uh, Cam Newton in the final play. Just too much for them to handle. But again, this game is on Cam Newton. I thought Cam Newton would pull the upset. Uh, and it looked like he was going to do it for a minute. But again, poor clock management. You, 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 can't, you can't have that happen. You know, so moving along in the uh, in the shield, what about the Giants, man? They go into Cleveland and they pull off the win. Not no huge surprise there. You figure Cleveland will get one win. Who would it be? Maybe this is a trap game. But the Giants, they stay focused. I like their attitude. They just went out there and did what they had to do to keep their winning ways. 
I believe Odell had two touchdowns. So good for them. But I'm going to tell you something, man. The Cleveland Browns, if there's one bright spot this season, and it's got to be the play of Terrell Pryor. Seeing here's a guy that was all this and that in, in, in uh, Ohio State as a quarterback, got into some kind of problems or whatever, didn't really get drafted in the NFL like he envisioned, but he did get drafted by Oakland. From Oakland, he winds up in Cleveland, and he decides, I'll switch position. He takes on a wide receiver position, and here's a team that don't know who's their quarterback from week to week. But this guy continues to put up top 10 receiver numbers, man. Again, over 100 yards yesterday. I mean, maybe he should quarterback and just throw to himself. I don't know. But, man, what 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 a year that he's having. It's a shame that it's going to uh, be uh, 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 on, on a team that's 0-12. and 12. Let me repeat that. 0-12. and 12. Maybe 0-11. But they haven't won a game all year. And chances are they probably won't win a game. Uh yeah, it, it's just sad. It's just sad. It's sad, though. But uh, anyway, needless to say, good win for the Giants. Uh, they stay ahead of Washington. It looks like they're, they're maintaining that first wild card spot, although uh, there's the, surgence, uh, the resurgence of Tampa Bay that's, that may have something to say with that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens on that one. All right, we got a big game tonight. Uh, my team, uh, Philly. They host the Green Bay Packers. Ah, oh, that should be a good game there, man. Philly needs this win in the worst way. I, I call this the eliminator, and I'm serious about this one, guys. This one will be the eliminator. All right, so the four games that I said to watch was pretty big. Uh, you had Kansas City over Denver. Atlanta handled Arizona at home. Uh, Carolina lost their chance to upset Oakland as Oakland prevailed. And then tonight's game. So it should be a big game. Keep an eye on Miami, guys. Miami's not playing around. They won six in a row. They're looking very good. They're looking really good out there. They're putting pressure. And when I say they're putting pressure on Denver or Kansas City to keep winning. Right now, Miami's occupying the second wild card spot. Yes, Miami. Miami Dolphins, led by Tannehill. But they've been led by the running back, Ajay. He's been having a phenomenal season. All right. So moving along to the NBA. And I want to start with the team right here in my backyard, man. The Atlanta Hawks. I tell you what, man. Atlanta Hawks. I didn't have them in my top eight this year uh, for the playoffs uh, before the season start. And I still don't. This team here, man, they're going to have their problems. Yeah, I like the signing of Dwight Howard. But Dwight Howard is no longer a go-to guy. And they need a go-to guy. Schroeder, he's not ready to take over the uh, 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 the leadership role in this team. And it's showing. They don't have a wing player that can get his own shot off the dribble. If Millsap is having a bad day, this is going to be a bad game for them. There's no reason after that debacle in Utah to 95-68 to 68, that they struggle against the Los Angeles Lakers that are missing two starters, Randall and Russell. I mean, they let Lou Williams and Clarkson come off the bench and just run right through them. I mean, this 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 is not a good look for, for the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks is going to need a trade in the worst way. They need to get somebody over there that can uh, get their own shot or help with the scoring load. I know some guys that I, I talk to around the job that are Hawks fans. When I mention the name Rudy Gay, they cringe. But Rudy Gay is a 20-point scorer for his career. And another guy I keep talking about, and that's Harrison Barnes on December 15th. I think Dallas is going to cut out the team. And the reason why I keep talking about December 15th, that is the day that teams can trade players that they sign on the offseason as free agent. That is the day I look for that. But, man, but on the other hand, how about the Lakers? After back-to-back -back bad losses against Golden State, you know, they turn it around uh, hosting the Atlanta Hawks and they get a much-needed win to keep their playoff pace alive. You know, again, going into the season, I had no idea that the Lakers would be flirting with the playoffs, but they are. And and, and with quality wins such as that, hey, you, you know, the, you can't take this team lightly. Again, they're one of the teams that's led by a coach that's always going to have the well-prepared and well-coached. And, and it shows. 
And 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 quiet is kept. The Lakers have some talent. It's just a matter of it, it coming together, you know. But big win for them. Uh, get them back in some uh, good graces. And speaking of L.A., let's go to the other team, the Clippers. They lost their second consecutive game on a row, this time to Indiana. I don't know. That, that, that hot start that they came out with, it looks like maybe that's dying down a little bit at this time. But uh, that's something to watch out for. Is this a win that gets Indiana to 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 maybe start going upward and in that direction that many people envision in the off season? You know, I I don't I'm not that high on Indiana. I don't think Paul George is really that guy. Do I respect him? Yes. Uh, Nate McMillan, the head coach, he might have been away from the game as a head coach too long to make the adjustment to this pace and space. You know, he's a hard-nosed, grit, defensive kind of guy. So we'll see what happens. He's been on the sidelines on that bench for a couple of seasons as a, as a uh, associate coach. But we'll, we'll see what happens there. But this could be the game that turns around the Indiana season. You know, but the Clippers, they lost two in a row. Don't know what to say here about that, but we'll see what happens. As for my Knicks, they had the day off, but I hope they well rested because they take on uh, the leading candidate for MVP this season. And that's Westbrook and his team. They come to the garden tonight. You know he's going to look to shine. So that, uh, hopefully they'll have their game face on today. But we'll we'll see. But this is going to do it for this edition of uh, Chopping It Up with Rob Mel. No notes, straight from the throat. As I always say, I see you guys in 24. Y'all have a blessed day.